Shalom. First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rochah HaKodash. Double honor to the apostles of Great Millstone. Honors to you, brothers, that are pushing the gospel of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, in all sincerity, diligence, and truth. And peace and grace be upon the house of David, which is the elect, the men, women, and children that are staying in the Holy Spirit and keeping the faith of Yahweh Shai Mashiach to the best of your ability day in and day out. All right, through your, your, your trials and your tribulations. All right, through your afflictions, all right, and your, your sufferings, you know, holding fast that which is, uh, you know, given unto us, all right, through the, the Rukha Kodash, which is the Holy Spirit that gives us the, um, the inspiration and the needful endurance <clears throat> through the uh, needful spirit to endure, you know, uh, this walk. So, you know, I just wanted to touch on a uh, topic, um, you know, the Lord had put on my spirit and you know, me and a brother was uh, just speaking on it. You know, Lord willing, it's uh, comforting and edifying to the elect, you know, basically going into the topic of um, enduring, enduring trials. All right. Enduring the tribulation because the Lord said that, you know, these things were going to happen. However, he said that we will be saved out of it. All right. And knowing and having faith that you're going to be saved out of these things is what separates you know the elect the hopeful from the rest of you know this world all right and that's what the lord um that's what that's what the the, the heavenly father is looking for all right that's what he is pleased in all right he's pleased in the uh, fact that there are there are particular spirits on this earth that no matter what they go through, they will consistently have faith that the Lord can provide and the Lord can deliver them. You know, and, you know, coming into the um, the days that we are in, all right, the beginning of sorrows, okay, uh, Esau, the devil coming down with wrath. Now is the time that that faith will need to be exercised at a level that has never, never uh, before been. You know, on this earth, because as Yahweh Shah said that there's going to be a time of tribulation like never before seen. So with the time of tribulation that has never been uh, before seen, there needs to be a exercising of faith that has never uh, been before on the earth. You know, uh, you know, besides, obviously, Yahweh Shai. OK, um, and that's who the Lord is going to give those crowns to. So starting here in first Peter. Chapter one, verse six, it says, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through many fold temptations. All right. So we have to continue to uh, rejoice. All right. Even though for a season, even though for a moment, we, you know, for a temporary moment, knowing that the things that are happening in the earth are a temporary and B those are these are wraths and these judgments are for the wicked okay now not to say that we won't be you know um in the midst of it pursuant to jeremiah the 30th chapter which we'll get but us being in the midst of it is not for our destruction it's for our trial okay of our faith so it says if need be ye are in heaviness through many fold temptations so they're going to be, you know, many fold uh, temptations or trials or provings that we have to go through, just like the process of refining a, uh, you know, precious metal. You just don't put it in a fire once. You got to consistently, you know, repetitively put it in that fire so it can it can come out with that glow that makes it valuable, that makes it shiny. That gives it its, its uh, uh, you know, uh, glamour. OK, so verse seven, it says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shahamashiach. So our faith, just like uh, uh, gold, is tested by the many fold fires that we go through okay let me read it in the nlt it says these trials will show that your faith is genuine 
Because you can say you have faith, but how do you prove that you have faith? The only way you can prove that you have faith, and they say it in the world all the time, you know, take a leap of faith, right? That's a metaphorically speaking. But the times that we're in, okay, the the wrath of of you know Esau with his restrictions and his you know coming against the the non-compliant. All right, hey, even the pestilences that are you know spreading throughout the world. All these things, when these things come, is to for the for the righteous. It's not to destroy you. It's not to um, you know take you out. It's to put your faith to the test to prove whether or not it's genuine. For example, you could catch right. You can catch the 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 Karaga muffin, okay, and you can actually end up being sick. However, at that moment, if you are a true man or woman of the Lord, it's not for your destruction. It's now a, a righteous man will seek the Lord. It will repent because obviously, just like what happened with Job. All right. Obviously, Job called hell because at certain some point in time, whether it be in his past life, more than likely, he was deserving of the hell that he caught. However, he still kept his integrity and he still kept his faith in Yahweh. All right. And that's what these trials are for. And when you know that you're doing right to the best of your ability, although your, your, your righteousness is as filthy rags. But when you know that you are trying to serve the Lord, remember what Paul said. Examine yourself, whether you be in a faith, know you not your own self. OK, because you might be able to fool you know, brothers, you might be able to fool, you know, people that you know on social media. All right. But at the end of the day, when you had to look yourself in the mirror, you know, your inner thoughts. And guess what? The most high knows your inner thoughts. He knows. That's why he says, uh, let me get that real quick in the book of Jeremiah. 17 verse. Um, 10, it says. I, the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, search the heart. I try the reins to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. Okay. It says, but I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. All right. The Lord knows your, your, your real intentions. So that's why going back to first Peter. It says that the trials will show whether or not your faith is genuine. Because if your faith isn't genuine, if your faith is a carbon copy, then when the going gets tough, you're going to end up folding. You're going to end up, you know, let's say if your job says you don't, if you don't get the 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 the, the Vanessa, you're going to, you know, get um, fired. If your faith is a carbon copy, if it's if it's false, if it's a falsified faith, then what's going to happen? You're going to fold. You know, and that's only just the beginning. Once it gets to the point of the karagma, that's the hour of temptation that's going to come upon the whole world. You see? So it says that the that your faith, uh, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, see, and that's why you have to have the mindset of although we're in it, we have the faith that we're going to be saved out of it. OK, so 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 when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Yahweh Shah Mashiach is revealed to the whole world. Okay? But that starts with you really truly believing. Because if you don't really truly believe that the Lord will save you out of it, when the trials come, you're going to try to look for your own way to be saved out of it. And try and trust on your own flesh, trusting in your own um, um, might. Or trusting in the power of, of, of Egypt 
that's going to lead you to what? Destruction. Because there is no way to escape other than serving and trusting in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shad. Okay, let's read this in Jeremiah 30, verse 7. It says, At last, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Okay? He it doesn't say that you will never you're not going to experience trouble. It doesn't say that you're going to be exempt uh, uh, from having to go through things that may seem troubling. It says that you're going to be saved out of the trouble and that he is talking about the elect. And a prime example of that is the three holy children. See, they went through. They were presented with trouble. They were presented with a a uh, a point or a position to where it was death. Really, they were presented with death. But because they had so much faith in their power, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the only one and true living power that can bring bring uh, bring down and and cause one to come up again. Right? They were willing to face that trouble. Because of their faith in the Heavenly Father. And the fact that they were willing to face that trouble, that right there was what it was what was needed in order for the Lord to deliver them out of the trouble. You know? So it's like you are in a fire, but you're not feeling the heat. And that's how, and why is that? And why did that occur? It wasn't because of something they did. Remember, when you read the, the story. It said that the ones who brought them to the furnace, it was so hot that it just it killed the, the ones that were bringing them to the torment. But they were there. Let's get it. Let's get it. Because, you know, they, these are the these are the um, the stories that you got to have in your mind when, you know, times like this is um, when, you know. We're we're coming into these times, man, you got to know that he is. Uh, where was that at? Uh, here we go. All right, let me start at 12 and I'm going to jump around. So it says, and these and there are certain Jews. Let me start at. Um, let me start at 11. It says, and whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth, he shall be cast into the into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And see, that's what Esau is setting up right now to worship his image. To whatever it takes, whatever you got to sacrifice, you need to sacrifice in order to follow the ways of Esau. OK. Now, we know that taking the juice is a violation of the commandment of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Taking that, that that karagma is a violation of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. But the, what Esau is going to present is it's either you fall down and, and worship the image, okay? Worship the image of Baal or be faced with a certain death. That's what Esau is saying. But you're fat, and that's only a, that's a trial to test us, okay? To see whether our faith is genuine. Now, that trial is going to come upon the whole world, but who's the ones that's going to get victory? Over that is the ones who whose faith is actually genuine. Who's the one the Lord is going to save out of that? It's the ones whose faith is actually genuine. Okay, even like I said, even with possibly uh, getting sick, you get sick. What do you do at that point? Because you got all these doctors saying that they were, you know, people that 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 go get hospitalized. They say. Oh yeah, once they get hospitalized, they they beg for the for the Vanessa. Look, you we there's brothers that have been sick. There's brothers that have been in a hospital because they got sick. But they weren't begging for the Vanessa. They were begging to the Heavenly Father Bashim Yahweh Shai to have mercy and to deliver us out of those things. And that was a what test of our faith. And because of that. The Lord has mercy. And then 
as you and then for, with that test what do you get you gain experience actually let me let me hold that real quick before i uh finish that you gain experience it's like a, a spiritual level up you know when you play certain video games and you go through different stages and as you go through different stages you level up and as you level up you get more you know uh coins or you get more you get bigger your, your, your character gets you know more powerful well that's us in the spirit see we have to go through these things we have to experience these things through faith so that we can become bolder in yahweh basha mihawa shot all right let's read this in romans chapter 5 verse um th uh, three it says and not only so but we glory in tribulation also knowing that tribulation the the problems you see that we can resort rejoice too when we run into problems and trials you don't get dismayed that's why yahweh uh yahweh always told you know uh joshua yahweh shai spoke about it be not uh, afraid neither doubt all right be not dismayed be strong and of good courage although you what you're looking at or what you are facing may seem troublesome but be of good courage if you got faith you're going to have good courage and courage means what bravery uh in this in the face of danger that's what courageousness is valor bravery in the face of danger and we see that this devil is setting up to bring a dangerous, dangerous time. So it says, and not so, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So whether it be tribulation that you catch in the body, or whether it be tribulation with demons trying to attack your mind, you got a glory in that because once you get that, it works your patience. And that patience is your endurance. Because remember, this, uh, uh, Yahweh Shai told Peter that Satan desires to sift you. How does Satan uh, sift? By bringing tribulation. The story of Job is a, is a prime example of that. By bringing various tribulations. And remember, all of the tribulations that, the, that Satan brings, he has to get the approval from Yahweh Shai. <laughs> okay? He has to get, because remember, Yahweh gave all judgment to Yahweh Shai. So Satan has to get the approval from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to even bring you tribulation. So that tribulation, when you go through it, it brings you what? The ability to endure. And it says impatience, experience, because now you endured it and now you have the experience, which means to try out. Now you have the experience to help. You know, all right, this happened to me before. And I got through it. So now I know in the, in the same time, if the Lord brought me through it the first time and I'm still serving him, I'm still having faith in him. Matter of fact, I got more faith now because I experienced this before. So this time I'm even even of a, of more of a assured that he's going to deliver me out of this. And that right there, experience and experience hope. So when you experience the tribulation and you got through it because of your faith, now you have hope. For the next time. And that's what all of this, all of this straight gate walk was doing for us for this time right now. Remember, the Lord said, Because thou have kept the word of my patience. So there have been times and situations that every brother, sister that is sincerely serving Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has, uh, has testimonies to this that there are things that we have gone through that made us exercise faith. And us exercising that faith gave us the experience. So now that we can remember how the Lord delivered us before. And now when we experience it this time, we can say, well, the Lord did it before. And I have faith that he will do it again. And I have even greater faith that he will do it again. You see? It says, and hope maketh not ashamed. Because when you hope in Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, he is not going to leave you or let you be ashamed remember in the book of uh let's get that um ecclesiasticus chapter 2 verse uh where is it, around 
Yep. Uh, 2 verse 10. It says, look at the generations of old and see. So we even have testimonies, you know, the cloud of witnesses that have written about their tribulations and their experiences and their hope. So it says, look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful and forgiveth sins and saveth in a time of affliction. OK. Saveth in a time of affliction. So when affliction arises, which that affliction that is arising is what a test of your faith to see if it's genuine. When you exercise the faith, when you show your faith, that's when the Lord will save you because of your faith. And that's why verse 14, I'm going to jump there. It says in woe, which means distress or destruction unto you that have lost patience. All right. Because when you experience a tribulation and then you lose the, uh, the ability to endure it, you get faint hearted. You get weak minded. You become uh, uh, hasty because I believe that's in the same chapter. It says what? Make not haste. Yes, uh, uh, prepare my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. Because when you make haste, that means you're not being patient. And when you lose patience, that what happens to you? Whoa, distress comes upon you because that shows that you lost faith. And what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? Because the Lord, remember, the scripture says that it's coming upon the whole world to try them. So the Lord is visiting the earth, which he made pursuing the second Ezra, the ninth chapter. That's why he shall. Uh, it is a time of Jacob's trouble. So we are Jacob. All right. We are Israelites. So we are going to be in the trouble. But the difference of the ones who are in the trouble and are saved and the ones who are in the trouble and are not is their what? Faith is their patience. Is the fact that they didn't make haste in the time of trouble, because when you make hasty the decisions, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10 times, you make the wrong decision when you make hasty decisions. And the reason why you make hasty decision is because you don't have faith that the Lord will provide. You don't have faith that the Lord will uh, uh, save you out of that affliction. So it says, what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? Because when the, if the Lord visits you and he finds that you are faithless, now the Lord is angry. Now the Lord has indignation. Because if the Lord sees that you don't have faith in him, you don't have faith in the creator. You don't have faith in the he is. <laughs> that is a straight disrespect to the heavenly father. And because of that disrespect, that 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 needs to be wrecked, that needs to be punished. All right. So let's go back now to um, Daniel chapter three. Verse uh, 12, it says, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of prophet of the providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou set up. And we are in that same stead as these men. We are in Babylon, a great and we don't regard the king's commandments. Just like during the time of uh, the, the Greeks, Antiochus, he had a commandment that all should leave their, uh, their laws and all be one. And you had a lot of wicked Jews that uh, um, consented. But then you had certain Jews that did not consent. Even up until the point of death. That's why Yahweh Shah said, be faithful unto death and he shall give us a crown of life. Right. So as they serve not thy gods, yeah, they're, they're, they're pseudoscience, they're false miracles. OK, their technology, their money. The ones that have faith in Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, no, nothing, no gods with the word gods mean power. No gods of Esau, which we know they're all false gods. They're all idols. They're, they, they're not, you know, uh, uh, um, living powers should be able to sway you. To 
not regarding or not honoring or not respecting your God, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah. It says, nor worship, which means to show reverence. You're only supposed to worship Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah. The golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What? And that's the same, same thing that we're going through right now. Okay? You have all these different talking heads. You had uh, uh, the king of Babylon, Biden, at this point said what? That our patience is wearing thin. Now, they might not be talking in a raging manner because Esau is a serpent. So he knows how to, he knows how to manipulate and uh, manipulate and coerce and talk. But really, as it says, those words were smoothing and butter. But war was in his heart, right? It says, they then brought these men before the king. So when they said it's going to be a stark winner, it's going to, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the Omarion will find you. Okay. It's going to be a dark winner for the unvanessed. All those are raging words. Because they're threatening with death. So it says, um, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Amenigo? Do ye not serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Okay, now I'm going to jump. Actually, let me, let me read this. It says, Now if ye be ready at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image I have made well. You see? He's saying, Oh, it's going to be well if you follow me. And same thing Esau is saying right now. It, it's going to be well if you take the juice. It's going to be well. What did um, Mayor uh, Lightfoot said? That all of these tactics are by design to cause inconveniences. But if you follow what we're saying, then it's going to be well. But we know, as the scripture says, <laughs> it shall go well with the righteous. But it shall go well, but it shall go ill with the wicked. That's what the heavenly father said. But Esau is saying the opposite. So who do you trust? But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Okay. And that's the pomp and the pride that Esau is coming with. Being the king of Babylon, the great. What God are you serving that can stop the things that is happening. Well, the God that is bringing the things that are happening. See, Esau wants you to think that you, you should trust in him. Let me get that. You should trust in his power. Um, Some trust. Let's get that. Uh, Psalms. Psalms 20 verse 7. It says. Um, start at six. It says, now know that I, the Lord Yahweh, saveth his anointed. Okay. His anointed. It says, he will hear him from the holy heaven, though the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. All right. In the carnal things, in the things that are tangible. But we will remember the name of the Lord Yahweh, our power. And that is once again, the ones who have genuine faith. And that is who the Lord is going to save out of the, all of the afflictions, save out of all of the trials. I got something else. Um, Psalms. Like it. Psalms 34. Verse six, it says. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Never said that there were not going to be troubles, but he saved him out of the troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear and deliver them. So in order to be delivered, you have to be in a situation to be delivered from. And in order to be uh, delivered from that situation, you have to have faith that you can, that he is, that he will deliver you. And that goes, like I said, for any and all scenarios that we're in. Sick, being sick, being presented with 
you know, uh, uh, no ability to pro provide for yourself or your family. OK, being thrown into prison, pursuant to Revelation 2 and 10, being presented with death. You have to be in those positions to exercise the faith in order for the Lord to prove your faith and then reward you for your faith, which will be the deliverance out of that situation. And now we're in the times where those men and those women that have been practicing that genuine faith, the Lord is about to make them known. OK, remember, let's get that. Um, let me see if there's something else here. Uh, let me run, jump to right here. Uh, uh, Psalms 34, verse 15. It says the eyes of the Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah, are upon the righteous and he and his ears are open unto their cries, to their cries. So the Lord sees what situations that we're in. Don't think because you're in a predicament of tribulation that the Lord it doesn't see that. No, he's actually watching very attentively to, to you in that point to see, to prove how you're going to react, to prove whether or not you are genuine or not. So when you are in that situation, it's not like the Lord just straight up forgot about you. Even if you are laid up sick, even if you got a pink slip or your job is telling you, hey, we brought the, you know, we're going to have to fire you. That's not the Lord forsaking you. That's the Lord putting you in that position to, and watching to see how you respond. Are you going to respond with integrity? Are you going to respond with valor, courage, faith? Or are you going to fold? Are you going to be sifted? Okay. So it says the face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut them off from the earth. The righteous cry of the the righteous cry. So why are you crying? If a righteous man is crying, obviously there he's in a or she's in a, a position of difficulty, right? It says, and the Lord heareth and deliver them out of all of their troubles. So where we, you got to expect to be in trouble in order for the Lord to show his power. You got to expect to be in a position of difficulty in order for the Lord to, sh to flex his mercy. Okay. What did Yahweh Shai tell Paul? That in your in your uh, in your weakness I am made strong. All right, so now let's get that now in Second Ezra sixteen. Second Ezra chapter sixteen verse seventy. I'm going straight to the point. Seventy three. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. So the Lord has to make his chosen known, right? But how is he going to make his chosen known? Because of their faith that they exercise in the way he delivers them out of their troubles. Because not everybody's going to be delivered. There are going to be people who, Israelites, starting speaking to Israel, because to hell with the heathens. But there are going to be Israelites who are in predicaments just like you are. Or you're going to be in the same predicaments as them. But... The difference is we're saved out of it and they're not. Okay. They're, they're destroyed in that predicament and we are delivered from that predicament. And when people start to see that, yo, how, how is it that, you know, you still got, you know, you got sick, whatever, but you know, you're not feeling, I mean, you got, uh, uh, you were around somebody who were sick, but you don't have any symptoms. You're good. Your son's good. How is that? And what we do? How does and, and see and a righteous person is not going to be like, oh yeah, you know, I take my herbs, you know, because you know I I'm just lucky. No, a righteous man or a woman is going to say what? All praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. He delivered us out of it, and that's how the Lord magnifies His name. That's how His name is magnified on the earth. And the more we magnify the Lord's name, the more He delivers us the more we magnify his name the more he delivers us <laughs> okay and then that's when the when the rest of the world start to see well these people have to be the chosen because they keep getting delivered out of situations where it would seem impossible 
that they are that they should be delivered out of. It says, and they shall be tried as gold in the fire. O hear ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. The days of trouble are at hand, and this is the time where the troubling days are at hand. But the ones who are beloved are the ones who are what? Who has faith. And the ones who are has faith is the ones who will be delivered from the same trouble that the Lord said is go, are at hand. So therefore, be ye not afraid and neither doubt, for the Most High is your guide. Now, if the Most High is guiding you, it's like a maze a master, right? If a maze master makes a crazy ass maze and puts you in it, but then he's telling you where to go. And you know he's the one that created the maze. You should be in a in a calming, in a calm, full spirit. Because you know that the maze master knows how to get out of the maze with ease. Because he's the one that created the maze. That's what, and that's who Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is. He's the one that's creating all of the all of the, the destruction, all of the wrath that Esau is bringing, all of the uh uh the, the tribulation. But he also told us that he's going to guide us out of those things. So there's no need to be afraid or doubt. You can't doubt the maze runner. I mean, the maze master, if he tells you to turn left, you're going to be like, are you sure to turn left? He's going to look at you crazy. And like, I created the maze. Why, why would I tell you to go somewhere that is not beneficial for you? The Lord is not cynical. He's not going to, he's not going to uh, uh, lead you down a wrong path. The Lord always leads you, leads his elect. We just read it in 2nd Edges, the 16th uh, 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 Sirach, or Ecclesiastic, it's the second chapter, who has been confounded that trusted in him. You can't find that one individual, man. Okay? So, you know, there was, uh, you know, so many other scriptures that I want to, you know, bring out on this topic because this is a topic that is, is, is a faith booster knowing that the Lord is, is going to bring the trouble, but at the same time, he's going to deliver us out of the trouble. Deliver the ones who has faith in him. Um, yep, this is one right here. James chapter 12, James chapter 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptations. Okay? Not blessed is the man that doesn't ever go through temptation, because we all, everybody is going to go through the trial. But the ones who is blessed is the ones that who have endurance, who patiently waits on the on the salvation of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. For when he is tried, so when he is tested, he shall receive the crown of life. So when you when you endure the, the temptation, that's the trying. And after you get tried, then you get rewarded because your faith has been now made, has now been proven genuine. He shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. All right. And you got to believe on that promise. You got to have faith on that promise, man. So I'm going to end that there. A hey, Lord willing, this was edifying and comforting unto the elect, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Racha Shalom.